So a structure like this is a big claim because I think museums, they might buy performance pieces, but are they really providing the structure to maintain them and to exhibit them? This could be here forever, but how much would that cost to have all these performers? It would be, in a way, a cross between a theater and a museum. It would be quite an experiment. Which is why it's so interesting that you know this exhibition is a collaboration between uh, Bayer Foundation, a museum, uh, Basel Yard for and the theater in Basel. As Klaus said, I mean, if you think about you know an institution, if you think that this could be a sketch, you know, for something which could last. Also, it's interesting. Um, as, as a teenager, I met in Switzerland the playwright Eugene Ionesco, and he was describing to me that actually in the theater world, because he one of the uh, protagonists in the 50s and 60s of absurd theater, uh, you know, alongside Samuel Beckett, and he uh, was describing to me that whilst he was with me having this coffee, actually for many decades his piece, The Bold Singer, La Contatrice Chauve, had been performed every single night in Paris. And you know what? It's still being performed. It's been going on now almost for half a century, and there has not been one single evening where La Contatrice Chauve hasn't been performed. So if this exists for theater, you know, it could also exist for these artworks here, which obviously have a different duration. They are not performances. It's very, very important that these are not performances because a performance or a has a very specific you know, duration. It lasts from six to seven, whilst this here is actually um, the uh, opening hours. It's throughout the opening hours of, of the museum. It's always there. There is another difference, which is that it's as Dorothea von Handelmann shows in her amazing you know, writing on the exhibition as a ritual, her forthcoming book, is that the exhibition as a ritual is very, very different from the theatre, because in the theatre you have one person or a few persons who communicate to many. And the exhibition is a much more liberal ritual. So the idea is also how we can actually create this life experience whilst preserving or continuing this very, very you know, free ritual the exhibition is. I think contemporary art always has to be totally disruptive. And so what does that mean? I think contemporary art has to be disruptive as it changes your world or the view that you have on the world. So going through 14 rooms, I think you have rooms that are painfully painful or painfully private and personal, that are overwhelmingly uh, intimate or they just overstep into your own private sphere. So in a strange way, I think the exhibition will halt your daily life, will make an interruption, and in the best of all cases, you're seduced for life and you will never be the same person. I think for us, the exhibition is very much about the human condition. It's not about art, it's about life. And the human condition didn't much change between the 60s and now. What did change and that led us to the epilogue is that social media, that devices became so much more important. In the 60s, you just had the video camera, camera being affordable for an artist, but now everybody has a video camera. So I think the idea of having devices be prosthetics, nearly an outsourcing of your body into a machine, that became an important component. And there are many you know, of these wonderful transgenerational dialogues in the exhibition, which is again a great advantage if it can work because you know, things are very fast. We live in an accelerated world and that means it's accelerated very often for the viewer. And statistics show that actually people spend only a few seconds in front of artworks in museums, even in front of the Mona Lisa, it's only a question of seconds. And we believe that this idea of reintroducing a slowness the experience here, it's not an exhibition one can sort of you know, consume, which resists this idea of being consumed in a few minutes. It's an exhibition which slows the viewer down, uh, but it also slows the curators down, because we have actually, by this rule also, that we do it only once a year, that we develop it over many, many years. You know, it's now been four years in the making, and it's hopefully going to continue for the next 20, 30, 40 years. You know, so for us, it's also something which allows us...